Describe your work to a blind man. Oh uh, yeah. What would it be? Uh, it depends on the well. I don't know. Lots of uh, googly eyes. A lot of fun. Think of something fun, and then think of that fun thing um, traveling at a high velocity, and then uh, colliding with another fun thing, and then that big bang of fun that explodes from those two forms uh, crashing into each other is some, somewhere in the middle of that is my work, I would like to think. Has there been one character that's been with you ever since you started? No, no, the characters come and go. So here's, here's what happens, you draw them, they exist on your page. If you turn the page and never look back, that's it, that character's gone. But occasionally, they get scanned into my computer or photographed on my phone. They get coloured in, they get developed, and they, they might have a life. They might be in a book or on a t-shirt or a hat or something like that. Make America great again! So, I mean, I suffer as much as anyone else with, like, self-doubt and um, not really knowing if it's the right thing or, you know, is, is this a good thing that I'm doing? I think that's normal. But... I just keep going, like, what, what is it I want to make? And sometimes those are grand things, but sometimes they can be very small things. I'm going to make a little comic strip. My mum studied art briefly, but then something terrible happened. And she, was? she met my dad. <laughs> so the story goes, and that swiftly put a, a spanner in her art career, and she moved to Birmingham. My dad's parents were children in the Second World War who lost their entire families and lost their homes and were put into concentration camps. And uh, a lot of, actually, a lot of the information I only found out towards the end of my grandfather's life when he was, you know, year on year becoming one of the last survivors of this group of young boys that came over to the UK. So I read in his own words stuff that he could never, you know, we would never talk about, I'd never heard before, about how the day they were put into queues to tell which camp they were going to go to and how he was split up from his um, his family. And, you know, his dad went in one queue, he went in another queue, and everyone in that queue were killed, and everyone in that queue... is unbelievable. Um, and I was like, wow, this is my grandfather and what happened to him? And to read that in a newspaper, because it's just stuff that you could ne never talk about, was really crazy, like, you know the true realities of a lot of this stuff had been shielded from me and my brothers. That we really, my parents did everything to make it like a fun, good childhood. Was the religion an important aspect of you growing up? It was certainly a bit of a drag, yeah. Um, <laughs> I went to a Jewish primary school. So again, I think my initial upbringing, everything felt normal. But like anything, eventually you're going to realise the, the, you're not the same as the rest of the world. I went to different schools where I was the only Jew. Yeah. And that's weird, because you're at one school and you're part of the gang. Just everyone seems to be about the same. And then you move school, and then you're the only one not in assembly, because they sing these psalms that you've never heard before and your parents don't want you to sing them, so you're sat alone in a classroom. <laughs> Literally singled out from the entire school. Like, that's a bit weird. Uh, but it's fine. It's fine. I don't mind. How, like, how, how important is um, the religion in your daily current life? It's not so important. Like, uh, I'm not religious. I'm like that typical Jewish. Do you tie any of your memories or past events in, back into your work? Uh, you could, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if it's really my place to say, but you could say, look, you know, you're trying to make fun of things, trying to make light of stuff, always trying to be the funny guy, trying to, you know, deflect serious questioning about stuff by, by, uh, by all this other stuff. And I, that seems to be the trait, you know, of... <laughs> Uh, it's the classic thing when you're at school to not get picked on is to to be funny. And I definitely like, you know, 
played up to that role. I was the weird, arty, nerdy, curly-haired boy, you know, doodling and get, getting into trouble. And always, ha- always like an idiot having the last word. You know how much room music takes up? None. It's just, it's just waves in the air. Tiny little keyboard. It's tiny. It's no... Well, I turned it off because you told me off. Look at that. Listen to this. How nice is that? Just chill out to that all day. This is an album I'm working on. It's called Sounds of My Stomach. <laughs> 